All right, everybody, it's your man Brett from The Skateboarding Show here with another think piece. And today's question, and it is a question, is, is skateboarding an act of rebellion? Now, I wanted to put the word still in there as well. Is skateboarding still an act of rebellion? Because that would, uh, but but to do that would imply that it ever once was an act of rebellion. And I think there was a time when it was an act of rebellion. I think, I think um, in the 70s, maybe in the 80s, there was a sort of act of rebellion. Maybe even in the 90s, there's a rebelliousness to skateboarding. Um, and there wasn't as many skate parks around. You had to go and do it in the street. It wasn't accepted. People didn't want to know about it. People didn't um, recognise it and celebrate it in the same way they did. And uh, I mean, if you think there's no money in skateboarding nowadays, there's even less in the 90s. Um, right up until it became really popular and was and was sort of popularised by the Tony Hawk games. Um which caught a lot of skateboarders off guard. Like all of a sudden, boom, it was really popular and really big. And we were sort of like, whoa, crikey, okay. We didn't know just because this computer game has become so popular that um, the actual act of skateboarding will become popular. But it did. That's my memory. But uh, people might have other different memories. And more importantly, there might be data sales figures which back up some other sort of story. I don't know. That's just sort of like my impression and memory of it all that um the skateboarding was not okay in the 90s it was not an okay thing to do it was not a recognized thing to do you you were getting kicked out of uh, out of street spots which you still get nowadays i get that but there was certainly there certainly wasn't towns that were that were welcoming skateboarding and we'll get on to that in a minute so Maybe it was an act of rebellion. It felt like an act of rebellion to do it. And it felt like, personally, I was saying, no, I don't want any part of your team sports. I don't want any part of your nationality. I don't want any part of your nationalism. I don't want any part of, like, um, doing the things that you lot, you mainstream society think I'm supposed to do. I'm going to go and do this thing over here uh, with a bunch of freaks and weirdos that I've met. And that who I really like and who I really seem to get on with um, and can relate to and whose and whose approval I want way more than I want your approval, mainstream society. I don't want your approval at all in any way. I don't care about it. I don't care if you don't give me your approval. These um, these bigger boy skateboarders are the ones that whose approval I want, not yours. So, um it felt like an act of rebellion in the 90s. Skateboarding certainly felt like an act of rebellion then. Even though I was quite young, even though I didn't really understand it, even though I didn't really understand what was going on, I still knew that there was something going on that went that meant it wasn't normal. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't an accepted normal thing to do. Um so so now if so, so where would we find the rebellion in skateboarding if we're gonna if we're gonna answer this question whether or not skateboarding is rebellious or an act of rebellion anymore? And I can see I can see both points of view for what I'm about to say. That um, if if there's rebellion in skateboarding, it, one could argue both sides that it's in street skating or it's in skate park skating, and that includes vert ramps and bowls and all and all manner of stuff. Purpose built spaces versus uh not purpose uh built spaces and i know i sort of brought this up a little bit in the last video um about purpose built spaces and whether it's authentic and meaningful but let's uh, i just want to address these two different perspectives okay one could argue that to go street skateboarding is an act of rebellion because you're using a space for an unintended purpose you're you're repurposing it and you're using that space in a completely different way. It's also rebellious because you're not supposed to be there. You're not supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to just be walking down the pavement or walking down that set of stairs. You're not supposed to be. You're not supposed to be in the town skateboarding. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. Um, that's that's not what people want you to do. So don't be doing it. So that that by its very nature is rebellious. But, but it's not the nineties anymore. It's not the nineties. 
towns are beginning to embrace skateboarding. Some towns are beginning to embrace skateboarding are, and are creating not a skate park, but a skatable space or a multi-use space, uh, which happens to have skatable architecture in it. Okay, so they're not they're not stating outright that it's a skate spot or a skate park. They're just saying, well, if you happen to be able to skate it, well, that's nice because it's a multi-use space. So it's for pedestrians and other people who might be able to use that architecture in some way. So towns are specifically building architecture that can be skated. So you're not actually even repurposing it anymore. But I get that that's a very few amount of towns, but it is happening. It is happening. Uh, you know, the, 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 the teens of the 90s are now the 40s of this, a, of this uh, time. Uh, and some of them work in the council now. Some of them work in town planning and are slyly or overtly adding skatable spaces in. And are slyly or overtly taking down the no skateboarding signs. Um... And with the popularity of skateboarding, seeing a skateboarder in town, seeing skateboarders do street skating in a town somewhere isn't so uncommon and it's not so unrecognised and it's not so, it's not such a, like a, it doesn't get such a reaction from people. It's just part of what you're going to see in a town, in, in a lot of towns, especially towns that have got, that have got a long history with street skateboarding. Let's take somewhere like Bristol. Bristol's got such a massive history with skateboarding that nowadays people going into Bristol city centre are probably likely to see a skateboarder and think nothing of it. Maybe, I don't know. Each individual person is different, I don't know. But but some cities and towns have a long history with skateboarders and the teens of the 90s, uh, whether they skated or not, might have known some skateboarders, might have seen skate spots and have grown up and have now got children that they're taking into town and they might even purposely go past the skate spots to show their children that skateboarding. That's something you can do. And this is where they do it in this town, look, in this city, in this urban environment. So it raises the question, is that still an act of rebellion then if it's accepted? Which leads me on to, therefore, weirdly, is it an act of rebellion to go and skate in the skate park? Because what you're saying is street skateboarding is the trendy thing. Street skateboarding is the thing that's pushed by brands. Street skateboarding is marketed. Nobody wants to know about anyone wearing a helmet and knee pads. Nobody wants to know about anybody going, no, I'm going down there for two hours to work hard on this one particular trick that I want to do. I'm not getting footage. I'm, I'm, I'm going there to get better at my skateboarding. And when I've got better at it and I've got my trick dialed, then I might video it, but um, but I'm going down there to go and work on it. No, nobody's going. My sponsors phoned me and told me I've got to go get some skate park footage. Nobody's saying that because none of the brands and none of the industry, from what I can see, want to really push it. There are some brands, a, a small minority of brands, that smaller minority of brands that they are the exceptions that prove the rule. That most brands want their riders getting street footage because. That's the cool thing, right? So does it become an act of rebellion when you do the thing that isn't cool or wanted anymore? Like, has anybody ever wanted... I think there was probably a time when people wanted skate park footage, maybe during the 70s and 80s when skate parks were big and were a thing and were, and, and were where you went and did skateboarding before it became a fashion as well as an activity... Um, you know, is it is it rebellious to to actively work on trying to perfect your skateboarding skill in in in, in a in an environment where you've got no other distraction or no other thing going on? Is it an act of rebellion to say I I'm going to concentrate on my skateboarding here? in the skate park where I'm not going to get kicked out, where the terrain's perfect and where I've got the opportunity to really focus on what I'm doing and not get distracted by pedestrians or security guards or or the or the surf surface being all off and wrong and it, and it not working properly. Is it actually an act of rebellion to say, 
Of course, I'm not going to get sponsored if I just create nothing but skate park footage. But that ain't what I'm doing this for. I'm doing this for the fun for, and for the love and for the engagement and for the accomplishment and for the achievement of skateboarding. At, at what point does disregarding the trends of the industry and of the culture of skateboarding and of the media of skateboarding, at what point does disregarding all that stuff make skate park skateboarding an act of rebellion I'm not really here to give an opinion i'm just asking some question and giving both points of view i can see how street skateboarding is an act of rebellion and i can see how skate park skateboarding is an act of rebellion um as always interested in intellectual intercourse around this about the you know proper discussion with a with with thought provoking ideas from people uh, and hopefully that's what all I'm doing as well. I don't I don't have an opinion. I don't. Uh, and, and of course, skateboarding is rebellious, is not rebellious. And it doesn't matter. Of course, those things exist. And of course, that's what could be said about skateboarding. Um, maybe overall, it's not rebellious at all anymore because it's so mainstream and so accepted that no part of it is rebellious in any way because it's just like, you know, the energy drink companies have got involved and now nobody cares. Maybe that's a reality as well. I don't know. But I do wonder if perhaps going against the trend is a rebellion, is an act of rebellion and therefore that might be skate park footage. I don't know. Perhaps it is still rebellious to go out into the streets. Um, whether you're doing it as an act of rebellion or not doesn't really matter. I sincerely hope that you are all getting out on your skateboards and um, getting yourself a sense of achievement and accomplishment and that you are facing um, trials and tribulations through failure and disappointment as well, because it's through those things that we grow and we develop. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And Geez, why don't I just touch on like something really amazing right at the very end there. It's through those things, it's through failure and disappointment that we grow and develop. Just drop that on you right at the very end. Right, um, in, in, the, in the words of somebody far better than me, Mr. Jeff Grosso, turn this off and go and do some skateboarding. See you all later.